Hello, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about S3 object life cycle, specifically talking about life cycle definitions and using object life cycles. So what is an object life cycle? Well, an object's life cycle is a set of rules that automate the migration of an object storage class to a different storage class or deletion based on specific time intervals. For example, I have a work file that I'm going to access every day for the next 30 days. After 30 days, I may only need to access that file once a week for the next 60 days. After which, meaning 90 days total, I will probably never access the file again, but want to keep it just in case. By using a lifecycle policy, I can automate the process of changing the file's storage class to meet my usage needs and keep my S3 storage cost as low as possible. So can you figure out what the lifecycle policy would look like and which storage classes should be used for each time interval? Take a second to think about that. See if you can figure it out. Well, again, here's our scenario. A work file that I'm going to access once a day for the next 30 days. Then after 30 days, I may only need to access that file once every week for the next 60 days. And then after 90 days, I will probably never have to access that file again, but will want to keep it. So what is the best solution to meet the usage needs and minimize cost? Well, the solution would look something like this. So for days zero to 29, being the first 30 days, my usage needs are very frequent. So the best fit storage class would be standard and the cost is the highest cost tier. But for the next section of time being days 30 through 89, total of 60 days, my usage needs are infrequent, meaning once a week or once every two weeks. So the best fit storage class for that would be infrequent access because even though I may only access it once a week or once every two weeks, there will be times when I need to access it and when I want to access it, I need that to be immediate. So the cost there is middle tier cost, so slightly less expensive than standard. For 90 plus, my usage needs equal most likely never needed. So the best fit storage class would be Glacier because this then provides the lowest cost tier. So the object life cycle would look something like this. From day zero, when it's uploaded to day 30, it will remain in standard storage class. Then on day 30, it will transition automatically to standard infrequent access. Then at day 90, it will automatically transition the object to Glacier, where it will remain from day 90 plus. Now, if I wanted to, I could also set a date, let's say a thousand days in the future to delete the file. So there's a lot of different options that you can use when creating an object life cycle. But the purpose, again, of the life cycle is to automate the process based on your usage needs to help minimize your storage costs. So in terms of life cycle management, life cycles functionality is located on the bucket level. So let's take a look at that, click on the bucket, click on properties, and we're going to see here that life cycle is listed here. So however, a life cycle policy can be applied to the entire bucket, applied to all the objects in a bucket, one specific folder within a bucket, and then applied to all the objects in that folder, or applied to just one object within a bucket. And you can always delete a lifecycle policy or manually change the storage class back to whatever you like. So with that understanding, now let's actually create this lifecycle policy. So on the bucket level, under lifecycle and properties, we'll click on add rule. So the first thing I need to decide is, am I going to apply this rule to the entire bucket, meaning that all files currently in the bucket will be applied to this lifecycle policy, and then all new files that are uploaded will also fall under the rules of the lifecycle policy, 
or I can choose a prefix, meaning I can select a folder or a folder and then an object in the folder to apply the lifecycle policy to. For now, we're just going to stick to the entire bucket. We'll go to configure rule. So first we're gonna look at actions on objects. So transition to standard infrequent access storage. Well, yes, that's the first thing that we wanna do because by default, the object is gonna come in as the standard storage class. So we don't have to set it to standard for the first 30 days, but we are gonna say that 30 days after the object's creation date, pre-populated there for me because that's a common selection. So 30 days after the object's creation date, we wanna transition the object to standard infrequent access storage. Then we wanna transition it to archive to glacier storage. And we will set that not from 60, but to 90 days out. Then if we look here, we'll see here that this matches exactly what I have down here. So I just built the scenario in which we were talking about in that from well, days zero to 29 or the first 30 days, the object will remain in standard storage class, then transition for 60 days to infrequent access, and then transition to Glacier. And if I wanted to, I could always put in a permanently delete the file, and I could set this to any number that I want. So if I set this to 1,000, then after 1,000 days that the object has been in S3, it will delete that. So it's a great way that if maybe for regulatory reasons, you have to keep files, say, for five years or seven years after which they can be deleted, then you can set that time period here and the files will be deleted and then you will no longer be charged for storing those objects. So I'm going to click Review and click Create and Activate Rule. So now that rule is live and active for our Project Omega bucket. And with that, I will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.